With finances being tight right now, you might be asking yourself whether you really need all the latest tech to create beautiful digital lettering pieces or art. And the good news is that you don't. In this video, you will learn how to get started with iPad lettering on a budget. I'm going to show you the most affordable iPads, apps and resources. Let's start with iPads. The most important thing for iPad lettering is that you get an iPad that works with a pressure sensitive Apple Pencil and with the latest version of iPad OS. Everything else doesn't matter too much and mostly depends on your personal preference. I've got a couple of iPads here that I want to show you first. This one is a 6th gen iPad with 32GB of storage that was released in 2018. And then I also have a 2nd gen iPad Pro with 256GB of storage which was released in 2017. Both these iPads currently run on iPad OS 17 which is the latest as of April 2024. They both work perfectly fine with the apps I'm going to show you a little later in this video. I don't recommend you get one of these iPads though because it looks like they might not be supported by iPad OS 18 anymore when it comes out later this year, which means you'll only get limited use out of them. But if you have one of these lying around already then by all means use it. Using an iPad you already have is always cheaper than buying a new one. I'm going to show you how they perform anyway and then you can be assured that any iPad you'll buy will have at least equal or better performance. So now let's have a look at the most affordable iPads that will be supported by iPad OS 18. I did a search on eBay for each of the models and here is what I found. Most affordable will be the 7th gen iPad. You'll probably be able to find one in reasonable used condition for around $200. It's quite a bit nicer than the 6th gen iPad I have here because it's got a slightly bigger screen and more RAM. If you get one of these iPads, make sure to get a 1st gen Apple Pencil as these are not compatible with the newer Apple Pencil. But from a lettering point of view, it's actually not an issue. I still very much like using the 1st gen Apple Pencil and even find it slightly more forgiving when using it for iPad lettering. You could also get a 5th gen iPad mini or a 3rd gen iPad Air. But I don't recommend either of them because the iPad mini screen is a bit small for iPad lettering and the 3rd gen iPad Air has the old shape. And you might as well get the regular iPad for less money. Of course the drawback of buying a second hand iPad is that it won't come with any warranty. If that is a concern you might consider having a look at Apple's certified refurbished store where you can find older iPads at a lower price that are still covered under that one year Apple warranty. And they will look like brand new iPads. This 8th gen iPad here for example is really good value for money. If you would prefer a slightly bigger screen then I'd recommend the 4th gen iPad Air. It works with the 2nd gen Apple Pencil which means it's magnetic and it charges while sitting on the iPad the same way iPad Pros do. You can get one off eBay for around $360 to $400 or from the Apple refurb store for $469. Things that make an iPad more expensive are a bigger screen and more storage. For iPad lettering you will not need a whole heap of storage on your iPad. My old 6th gen iPad here only has 32 gigabytes of storage and is perfectly usable. Now let's look at the apps to consider to practice iPad lettering. My all time favorite app is Procreate. It's where I've started my lettering journey in 2015 and since then I've used the app almost daily. The reason why Procreate lends itself so well to lettering and calligraphy is because it has customizable brushes that respond very precisely to the screen pressure you create with the Apple Pencil. Almost like using a real brush or a nib on paper. The app costs $12.99 as a one time purchase and even if you're on a budget this is a really affordable app and has been the number one paid app in the Apple App Store for many years. If you would prefer to try a free app first, I recommend trying the Adobe Fresco app. It also has a selection of pressure sensitive brushes, although they are not quite as refined as the Procreate brushes. Now that we have an iPad and some apps, let's have a look at resources you can use to start practicing. When I first started my lettering and modern calligraphy journey, I bought a set of practice sheets and just started tracing the letters until my muscle memory formed enough to be able to reproduce the same strokes freehand. While I still think it's a great way to practice, I recommend starting on a slightly more basic level first. 
here to the collection of resources that you can get from my website for free. The first one I recommend is called the iPad Lettering Starter Kit. It contains practice sheets to help you practice the basic strokes. I've made the practice sheets as both Procreate canvases and JPEGs that you can load into Adobe Fresco. The second resource I recommend that you get is the iPad Lettering Cheat Sheet with the lowercase letters. It contains an overview of the basic strokes but then it's also got all the lowercase letters for you to practice. Once you've downloaded the zip files to your iPad, tap on both of them to unzip them. The iPad Lettering Starter Kit contains five files. You can see that there are two Procreate canvases and also a Procreate brush. And then there's two files that have the Fresco mentioned in the name. And these are JPEGs that you can load into the Fresco app. But let's start with Procreate. In order to install these files into Procreate, you simply tap on them and then Procreate imports them automatically. This is the first practice sheet. So now let's do the same with the second one. And then let's also import the practice brush. So we're going to tap on it and it will automatically import into Procreate. And then you want to do the same thing with the iPad letters cheat sheet. Tap on that Procreate file and this will now import that cheat sheet into Procreate. The practice sheets will be loaded into your gallery and you will find the brush in the imported folder of your brushes. Before you start practicing the letters, you want to practice these eight basic strokes first. They will help you immensely getting started with your lettering journey because they form the components of each letter. Once you master the basic strokes, it's just a matter of putting them all together to form your letters and I will show you how to do this in just a moment. But first, let's go back to our first strokes practice sheet. Open up that layers panel and make sure you are writing on the layer that says right here. The nice thing about practicing lettering on your iPad is that you can practice as much as you like without wasting pen and paper. Just create a new layer and then you can start again. The first two strokes we are going to practice are the thin up stroke and the thick down stroke. Every letter you write has a thick and a thin component and it's the down stroke that is thick and the up stroke that is thin. Make sure you spend a good amount of time practicing these two. Then I also think it's a good idea to practice a slight variation of the down stroke. One of the things that can be tedious with iPad lettering is getting the end of your stroke just right. By practicing the stroke, you will develop a feel for the ending of the stroke so that you can make every letter look beautiful and consistent. Next up, we will need to practice the transition between the thick and thin strokes. This is usually the hardest part and so really the key to practicing these strokes is to go really, really slowly. Let me know in the comments which stroke you find easier, the overturn or the underturn stroke. I definitely find the underturn stroke much easier for first starting with the thick down stroke. But you might be different and I'm curious to know. Next up we are also going to practice some loops and you can see here already they almost look like a little L and a J. So it's super useful to practice these as well because then you have learned how to write these letters already but they are super useful for other letters as well. And again make sure that you're going really really slowly so that you're really getting that transition between the thin up stroke and the thick down stroke as smooth as possible. And then last but not least we have the ovals and the big trick with the ovals is to actually start on that right hand side of the stroke where it's thinnest. So make sure you start right here, go around and then finish up here again. I'm going to show you how this works and the reason why we are doing this is because it's much easier to match up your stroke here where it's the thinnest. All right, and then once you're super comfortable tracing all these strokes, it's time to put them all together and to start writing letters. Let's go back to that letters cheat sheet and let me show you how it works. When you open up your layers panel, you'll see that there's a variety of layers here. One of them says letters color coded. If you toggle this checkbox on, you'll see that I've color coded all the letters so that you can see which basic stroke they are comprised of. So now I'm going to turn this layer off again and I'm going to show you how to write all these letters. We're going to start with the letter A which consists of the oval and the underturn stroke. 
And it's really important that you create two separate strokes. So instead of just writing the letter as you normally would, you actually want to make two strokes. So you're going to write the oval first and again going really slowly, take the apple pencil off the screen and then we are going to do the undertone stroke like this. And we're going to do the same thing with all the other letters as well. We are writing individual strokes for each letter as we write them because it makes it so much easier and you get much better control over the shape of your letters. Remember that you can always turn on that reference guide if you need help remembering the individual strokes. You want to do this exercise over and over again until you feel really comfortable tracing the letters. Then you can turn that letter tracing layer off and also practice freehand. And now let's also have a look at Adobe Fresco. And in order to practice with this app, you want to load your JPEG file into the app. So you tap on the picture icon here and then you select files. And then you select the files that have the Fresco in brackets here to load it into the app. You can place it on the page and then tap done. And now we're ready to practice. And in order to practice, we are going to select one of the lettering brushes here. And I think that point pen 2 works quite nicely. So you can select this and then you want to adjust it a little bit. You see that there's a smoothing setting here. And I recommend that you set this to around about 90%. And then that brush size here is set to 30 and now you are good to go. And now you can do the same thing that we've done in Procreate before. To start with you want to create a new layer just above your image layer. And this is that you don't have to import your file every time if you wanted to practice again. But you can just create a new layer and then start again. And so now the same way that we've done it in Procreate we are also going to trace the letters here in Fresco. And you can see that the performance is not quite as good as it was in Procreate. There's a little bit of a lag in the lines but it really is not too bad and I think you'll get used to this after a little while of practicing. If you find that your lines are still a little bit wiggly you can also set the smoothing to 100% and see how that works. The only drawback here is that it might get even more laggy and if you're really not happy with the lag that this creates then you can turn that smoothing back down maybe to 85 and see if this setting works a little bit better for you. So now you can do the exact same thing that I've shown you before in Procreate. You can trace the strokes like this until you feel really, really comfortable with them. I recommend that you do this quite a few times so that you are familiar with how much pressure you need to put onto your Apple Pencil in order to create the thick and the thin lines. And then once you've finished practicing all your strokes, you can also import your letters into here. So you can either start a new document or you can import it on top of this one. So I'm just going to import it into the same file. And you see that it's gone at the top so now we can just create a new layer and then we can practice our letters here as well and you'll see now that this brush is not quite as nice as our Procreate brush but you can still practice your letters and get a feel for that thick and uh, thin strokes and this is really just a matter of practicing I haven't practiced much in this app so my strokes don't look that nice but with a little bit of practice and maybe a slightly better brush you'll be able to get really really nice results in this app as well you could also try this brush here you want to change the settings a little bit I've set the size to 32 and then the smoothing to 100% and this now creates more of a brush stroke but it's really nice because it's got that little bit of an angle on it and it's also a little bit irregular so this is kind of a dry brush effect that you can get with this but it's a really nice brush to practice your lettering with I'm now going to speed up the video so that you can see me write all the lowercase letters once you've completed that lowercase letters, you can also download uppercase letters and numbers. I really hope you found this video helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends and family to help them get started with iPad lettering on a budget too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.